Hello, I'm Hazel Johnson and I'm a Technical Services Specialist at Oxford Nanopore Technologies. On this video, I'll be taking you through the anatomy of a min-ion and a grid-ion flow cell and its various components. In this image, floating above the min-ion is a consumable flow cell which contains the sequencing chemistry and provides the fluidic interface between the custom ASIC for data processing and the electrodes. The min-ion flow cell has 2,048 microwells, each containing a single nanopore and is compatible with both the min-ion and grid-ion, generating 10 to 30 gigabases of DNA sequence data. Both the min-ion and grid-ion have been covered in more detail in a separate video. Now let's look at in more detail the components of the flow cell. The main feature on top of the flow cell include the priming port cover, which has the priming port located underneath. It is opened before the flow cell is flushed with priming mix. Opening the spot-on activator reveals the spot-on sample port. The sample port in enables loading a sequencing library directly onto the sensor array. The sensor array of the flow cell comprises of 2,048 sensor wells, each designed to hold a single nanopore. The waste chamber, which has a total capacity of 1.9 mils and allows excess sample or buffer to be removed with a with a pipette via the waste port. On the underside of the flow cell, there are three main features. The ASIC, or application-specific integrated circuit, is connected to the sensor array and measures the ionic current flowing through the nanopores, providing a digital readout of the current flow. The ASIC receives commands from the MinION software to provide control for the sensor array, including acquisition frequency, signal filtering, sensor current range, multiplex input selection, electrode bias potential generation, and deselection of unavailable sensor. The heat mat is essential for temperature control by providing constant thermal contact between flow cell and min-ion. It protects the ASIC from sudden fluctuations of temperature, which could affect the integrity and therefore availability of active pores for sequencing. And finally, the connector pins. These are responsible for the transfer of data to the min-ion so that electrophysiological measurements can be made as the ion flow changes through the pores. So what makes up a flow cell? A flow cell is made up of three compartments, common reservoirs separated from the bulk by a diffusion barrier. The bulk buffer is separated from the, from the individual wells also by a membrane. Then there's the individual wells, each of which contains a nanopore. Flow cells are shipped with storage buffer, this is in yellow, in all three compartments, which maintains an osmotic balance across the membrane. A big advantage of the compartmentalization is that when you're ready to run a flow cell, the storage buffer within the bulk compartment can be replaced with running buffer without altering the electrochemistry of the flow cell. The storage buffer contains salts and the strand redox couple that enables current to run through the nanopore and also contains QC DNA molecules that gives a distinct signal which helps to identify functional pores during flow cell check or platform QC. Platform QC is a scan of each multiplexer or MUX in turn to see if a pore is present with the aim of determining the total number of functional pores present, the sensor array prior to sample loading. 
Flow Cell Check or Platform QC is covered in more detail in a separate video. Now let's talk about priming the flow cell and why it's necessary before starting a sequencing run. The figure above shows the flow cell valves. The path of the liquid through the flow cell is regulated by two valves, one immediately downstream of the priming port and the other between the end of the array and the waste chamber. Valves are shown in the diagram in red. The flow cells are shipped with the priming port covered and both valves closed. Before a sequencing run, the storage buffer in the bulk compartment needs to be replaced with a priming solution. The priming solution is a mixture of running buffer and nuclease free water. This provides the optimal condition and also contains the fuel required for sequencing. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this talk useful, please browse through our whole lists of videos on nanopore devices, chemistry, software and workflows.